Hey guys, so in the last couple videos, I've gone over how to get Chibi OS up and running on your Arduino, and I've even gone through how to do some basic message passing so that you can share data between different threads. In today's video, I want to talk about two different concepts, the first one being mutexes, and the other being a concept that I've touched a little bit upon before, and that's priorities. So let's start with mutexes and then a little bit later on in the video i'm going to show you guys a little bit on how priorities work and and really how priorities can screw up your program if you're not careful so starting out we've got our same basic setup up here at the top i'm declaring three threads i've got my two sort of main threads that we'll be working with today and then my heartbeat thread and as I went over last time, the heartbeat thread, it's basically just a visual check for me to make sure my program hasn't crashed in some way. And we'll see a crash sort of a little bit later in the video. So this is so this function, all it really does, this thread, is blink an LED sort of in a heartbeat pattern, and that just tells me things are running just as they should be. So we've got our three threads, but then I have this mutex declaration. And what a mutex is, is it's basically a way for us to prevent race conditions. It's a way for us to lock down a certain resource so that only one thread can access it. And so what do I mean by resource? Well, a resource, unlike, well, a resource could be a piece of data it could be a variable or a set of variables, a struct, whatever. But more often than not, at least in my own experience, and maybe some of you who've worked with RTOSs for a long time have had other experiences, but for me, for the most part, it's been physical resources like serial lines or pins or, or something like that that it exists in the, in the real world. And so what we want to do today is we're going to have a mutex that will protect a serial line. And this will be the serial line that prints back to the computer. So what we want to do is be able to have one thread do what it needs with the serial line without having any other threads jump in and mess it up. So now let's go and actually take a look and see what's going on here. So. I've declared this mutex and I have my two main thread functions and down here at the bottom you can see we got the heartbeat thread set up. This is all basically exactly the same from the previous videos. So if you haven't, if this all looks sort of foreign to you, go check out the other videos. I have a playlist set up to, or there's probably going to be a link on the screen right now. Go check those out. So we have two functions here and they're pretty similar and they're both very simple. So let's take a look at this first function here and we have nothing that we have to do sort of as our setup. We just jump straight into our while loop and our while loop starts out with a ch mutex lock. And so that is basically it's locking access to the serial line to only this thread. Now I do want to note that we call it serial mutex, but that's just to give us a name that doesn't, this doesn't really lock anything on a hardware level. It doesn't make it so that this thread is the only thread that could access the serial line. It means that as long as there, before we try to use the serial line in another thread, if we try to lock this mutex, that thread will effectively go to sleep until that mutex is unlocked. So basically it's, you have to use these locks. You can't just lock it and then assume that it's locked to that thread from another thread. So it's, it's in name only, but what we're doing is we're locking access to the serial line. So we lock access and then we have a for loop that just runs through 10 times and prints out the numbers one through or zero through nine and sleeps every time it prints out a number. And that for loop runs through, prints out all 10 and then unlocks the mutex. 
So this basically it locks it, prints the stuff out, and unlocks it. And then we have another thread down here which tries to do a similar thing. It locks it and then just prints out my turn. Like, come on, can I use the serial line here? And then unlocks it again. So basically what we'll see here or what we hope to see here is that this thread here will print out 1 through 10 and then this thread will print out my turn. So before we actually get into this, I'm going to change this code up a little bit right in front of you guys. I know it's not really my norm, but I'm going to change this up and I'm going to add a small sleep. I'm going to do that right there. So we're going to see what this program would look like if we didn't have the mutexes. So our goal with the program is to print 1 through 10 and then print my turn. And we're going to see what happens if we do it without the mutexes. And I will also explain to you a little bit later on why I just added this sleep line. But for now, let's go ahead and upload the program here. Okay, and if I open up the serial monitor, well, yeah, you can see uh, we're not printing 1 through 10. We're printing a lot of my turn, and mixed in there very rarely are some numbers there. So certainly not what we wanted. So now let's go ahead and go back to here and uncomment these lines. And I'm going to knock out this sleep just for now. And let's upload that again. Okay. Ah, there we go. So now you can see that the mutual exclusion, the mutex, is preventing the thread that prints my turn from being able to print until that mutex is unlocked by the other thread. So you can see it's basically, it's, locking the mutex, printing 1 through 10, even though there's a sleep in here. Now, you'd think that if it went to sleep, it would wake up this thread, because look, in this thread, there are no sleeps. It doesn't sleep at all. It's supposed to just be running over and over and over. But we have, we've locked this mutex up here. So when this thread, at whatever point, either just entering the thread or maybe it's coming back from a loop, at whatever point, it's trying to lock the mutex and it's not getting access to it because we locked it up there. So this thread is now going to sleep until just about a second passes. We've done 10 iterations of our prints and sleeping 100 each time is about a second and we unlock it. And then we get my turn to print. It locks, prints, and then unlocks and this thread, while this was printing, was sitting there waiting to be unlocked and told that it can print. So you, you can kind of see how this is allowing us to share a resource without stepping on each other's toes. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk to you guys about today was priorities. So back in the last video, the message passing video, I introduced this heartbeat thread and gave it a priority of normal minus one. Now, what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to give a priority of plus one to the my turn thread. And we're going to take a look and see how that affects things. So all I've done is I've just given it a higher priority than the thread that, that prints the one zero through nine it gives those 10 print statements. This is now a higher priority than this. So now let's just see what happens if we upload that. Okay. Now, I know you guys can't see this, but right off the bat, I can see that my little blinking heartbeat light isn't blinking anymore. So let's go ahead and take a look at the serial monitor. And wow, uh, yeah, I got a lot of my turn and absolutely nothing of anything else. You can see I'm scrolling up here. There's nothing. It didn't, so what we've done here 
is exactly one of the reasons why I have this heartbeat thread is we've now made it so that no other thread can run. And that's really, it's because of this ch thread sleep. This function, this thread here, has no sleep in it anymore. So all it's doing is running continuously in a loop that never ends and has no time to sleep. And it happens to now be the top priority thread that exists. So the operating system, ChibiOS, doesn't give any time to the, any of the other threads. And so that's why the light stopped blinking, this thread stopped running, and we're only getting this thread's code running because the operating system is saying, this thread here is the top priority, and every time it, you know, there are other threads waiting to run, but this thread has not released control of back to the operating system yet. So you can see that threads and priority, you have to kind of keep track of what priority you have. And you also do want to make sure in general that all of your threads do go to sleep at some point. You can see if I add this sleep back in, that now if I re-upload it, because it has time to sleep, I'm guessing that I'm going to see my light start blinking again and that the one through or zero through nine should start printing again. Yep, and I do see the light blinking and look at that, we're back to one through nine printing, just like normal. So that's, that's how priorities work and that's how you can see you can get screwed up really quickly, especially if you have a high priority thread that doesn't go to sleep that whatever the that thread is is going to take all of the cpu time so that's all i wanted to talk about with you guys today i hope it was pretty clear i know I, we did two concepts mutexes and priorities but i think they're both pretty manageable and i think that they although not traditionally i think that in this video they went together pretty well so if you guys like this video Definitely, you know, go check out other videos on the channel, subscribe to the channel. You can also find me on Twitter at twitter.com slash it kind of works Inc. And also on my website at it kind of works.com. And yeah, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.